Water, the aerial should never work over the roof. The danger of roof ventilation could be a serious hazard to those on the ladder. When using the aerial for rescue operations, the approach should be made from above to avoid the possibility of victims jumping onto the aerial and creating an overload situation. When making a rescue, always position the tip for easy access. Remember, however, that the aerial is designed for positive loads and is intended to be supported only by its own lift system. Do not rest the ladder tip on any type of structure, such as a window ledge, roof edge, or overhang. Water to the aerial can be supplied by the onboard midship pump or by a second pumper. If supplied by a second unit, the operator should connect the pumper's discharge lines to the rear aerial inlet. If the midship pump is to be used, the operator must first be certain that the truck transmission is in neutral and that the parking brake is on. The pump can now be shifted to the pump mode. Place your foot on the brake pedal. Shift the transmission to drive and make certain the green OK to pump light is illuminated. A momentary loss in power to the aerial will occur during the switching procedure. Before leaving the cab, check again to see that the green OK to pump light is on and that the speedometer begins reading miles per hour, indicating that the pump is in gear and the transmission's fourth gear lockup is operating. Remember, the only time the aerial PTO will work with the transmission in the drive position is when the pump is in gear. Any other time, the transmission must be in neutral with the parking brake always engaged. If water is supplied by the unit's pump, the aerial discharge valve should be open. When the pump is used for primary ground attack or when a relay pumper supplies water for the tower through the rear inlet, the aerial discharge valve should be closed. The high idle system is automatically disengaged when the unit is placed in the pump mode. Engine RPM is then controlled by the pump operator. During pump operations, the engine RPM will be sufficient to operate all aerial functions at normal conditions. To locate the optional pinnable waterway at the desired position, reposition the electrical plug. Then remove the safety clip and lift the locking lever to unload the locking pin. Remove the clevis pin and place the locking lever in the vertical position. You may now move the waterway and monitor to its desired position at the tip of the fly section or the tip of the midsection. Using the locking lever, align the locking arm with the anchor bracket to accept the clevis pin and install the safety clip. The waterway can then be locked into position by pushing the lever forward until it stops for the fly section or by pulling the lever backward until it stops for the midsection attachment. The unit can then be retracted while flowing 1,000 gallons per minute at any aerial elevation. However, it's recommended that the aerial be retracted slowly while flowing 1,000 gallons per minute. At 500 gallons per minute, the aerial can be retracted at maximum speed. Once the aerial operations have been completed, the ladder can then be placed in the bedded position. Before lowering the aerial, check to see that the water monitor has been properly stowed in its horizontal position to avoid possible damage to the cab roof or monitor. You can then lower the aerial into the boom support until it contacts the support. Slowly continue to lower the device until the chassis cab starts to deflect down. If the lowering pressure is increased, a relief valve will open to prevent damage to the aerial device or chassis frame. After the ladder has been properly bedded, the stabilizers can be retracted in the following manner. First, remove the locking pins from the stabilizers. Switch the stabilizer aerial diverter valve switch to the stabilizer position while in low idle. Activate the engine high idle switch. Raise and retract the stabilizers.
Move the engine idle switch to the low idle position and change the diverter switch from stabilizer to aerial mode. Place the auxiliary stabilizer pads back in their holders with the handles facing down. Remove the wheel chucks and see that they're properly stowed. Disengage the aerial PTO and aerial master switches. At Pierce Manufacturing, our unequal dedication to quality, dependability, and user safety have made the Pierce Heavy Duty Aerial Ladder the most reliable product available on today's aerial market. Thousands of hours of designing, engineering, and testing were devoted to ensure it would meet the rigorous demands of today's fire service. To ensure the safe, efficient operation of your Pierce Heavy Duty Aerial Ladder, it's important for all personnel associated with the unit to have a thorough understanding of its operating controls and procedures. The operator's manual supplied with your ladder provides a complete explanation of all aerial ladder controls and operating procedures, as well as suggested maintenance guidelines to keep your Pierce Heavy Duty Aerial Ladder operating in top condition for many years to come. For efficient, reliable aerial ladder performance, you can depend on Pierce providing true innovation for today's firefighters.